So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we are recording this lecture now. Uh, Ahmed Mushtaq asked a question. So, how would the higher centers know that what response should be generated since the sensory input ends in spinal neurons? That's not the case. The sensory input uh, through the ascending fibers is sent all the way up uh, to the higher centers, including the cerebral cortex. Most of the stuff, sensory stuff, ends up in sensory cortex, uh, which is the highest uh, center uh, of the brain. Uh, and it is this is where it is processed. I just made a point about interneurons that they are not really dumb terminals or just conduits of transmitting information from here to there. They actually have some some degree of processing in themselves and they augment, they help higher centers uh, achieve complex movements. Okay, is that clear, Emil? Cool. Okay, so we now we now start. Okay, now I will be slow in this topic. Okay, in fact, in this chapter, the first chapter of Gaitan, uh, Abdullah pointed out. Thank you very much that this uh, Gaitan reference needs to be there. This is the first chapter of motor physiology from Gaitan. All right, I'll be very slow in the initial part or maybe throughout. Um, let me just give you a snapshot of what to expect in this chapter. Uh, mainly, you will be discuss. You will be. Let me just turn on the annotation notes, which I really like about this. You will be looking at this guy, muscle spindle. Okay, this is the main uh, thing to understand. Uh, what is muscle spindle? What does it do? Okay, and what it does? How is it important to us? So it, you must uh, must have inferred by now that this is pretty important. Well, it is, okay? So one of the main features of this chapter is an explanation of uh, muscle spindle uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, it ends with reflexes, the various kinds of reflexes uh, and so on and so forth. This is just a snapshot, a very, very broad snapshot of the first chapter, okay? Uh, now let's dive in in today's lecture. Today I hope to achieve three things with it. One is to give you a, an appreciation of that there are different type of muscle fibers. Till now you have discussed or must have read uh, muscle fibers. Okay, uh, muscle fibers which are uh, responsible for muscle contraction, whole muscle contraction. Yes. So we will we will discuss today the difference between intrafusal and intrafusal and extrafusal muscle fiber can everybody hear me okay and please remember that we are in we are mostly not using fiber optic internet so although my internet is pretty all right but still, it's 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 our country, and things are not you know uh, as they say that they are. So things may be unstable. Internet may be unstable from my part, uh, but not to worry. The whole thing is being recorded, and inshallah, it will be put swiftly after this lecture is over. The live lecture is over. So do not think for a moment, inshallah, that you will be left behind. It's my utmost uh, uh, focus to include all of you in this in this learning process, either live or offline and in offline you can always ask me questions you know that uh, i'm available for that kind of thing and even a, a live youtube uh, chat can also be arranged okay so coming back to the point uh, we will start with the types of muscle fibers extra and intrafusal fibers what is their function what is the difference between them uh, then we'll uh, hop on to the main focus here which is muscle spindle uh, uh, what is it how does it relate to the different types of muscle fibers uh, just discussed? Uh, their innervation, and this is where you find a peculiarity uh, that being a sensory receptor, uh, it of course has a sensory innervation, but interestingly, what is this? It seems to also have a motor component. Now this is obviously something that you may not have uh, read before 
okay uh, a sensory receptor is supposed to as i'm sure of Noura is also discussing with you is supposed to carry sensory information yes um, and hence it needs to have sensory technology sensory technology only but what is a motor innervation doing in a in a in a basically sensory receptor so this is uh, this is what it what by the way makes muscle spindle one of the trickiest of them all uh, and that's why my speed will be quite slow and punctuated inshallah to accommodate uh, any uh, lack of understanding on your part okay then we will we hopefully uh, uh, also intend to do uh, the the two responses uh, of the muscle spindle namely uh, static response and dynamic response these are sensory responses so the uh, you can say the sensory output of muscle spindle uh, is uh, static one uh, the static type and the other is a dynamic type i don't expect you to understand any of this at the moment but i'm just sens sensitizing you to what to expect in today's lecture okay right let's just dive in further okay. now sensory physiology of muscle it includes length monitoring systems and tension monitoring systems you can see that i have faded out the tension monitoring systems because this is not my focus at the moment i think uh, a couple of lectures will be will be focusing uh, on length monitoring systems first and then we will go on to the tension monitoring systems okay but very briefly in length monitoring system we will be talking about muscle spindle uh, muscle spindle is is the sensory receptor of uh, focusing on the length of the muscle. Uh, the tension of the muscle is detected by anyone? Which receptor monitors the tension in the muscle? Okay, Golgi tendon, well done. Golgi tendon organ is the tension detector, while muscle spindle is the length detector. Okay, so this is now the story of the length detector, the muscle spindle. Muscle spindle, muscle length or stretch, same thing really, it detects that. Okay, Golgi tendon is uh, deputed to detect muscle tension. Okay. This is where I need to zoom this in. So buckle up. This is what he has done is he has uh, zoomed in on the bicep. Yes, you appreciate this. This is the bicep and this is a zoomed version of the bicep. Can you see this? I'll, I'll just zoom in it, zoom it in now. Okay. Yes, guys. Cool. Okay, tell me, you can see the sprint here, <clears throat> this sprint. Can you, can you see the, when, where he has dissected out this part of the muscle throughout and is showing you clearly what is inside? What is inside the, this part of the muscle? Can you see this? Is, is the resolution supporting enough viewing? This part? Okay, sure. We are, we are set now. Okay. Now, we'll be slow, as I mentioned. The muscles which are, the muscle fibers that you see now, just, just follow my cursor, this red cursor here, okay? Th these fibers, the ones that uh, uh, the ones that run from tendon to tendon, the long ones. Okay, this is what you have been discussing and uh, reading up in uh, nerve and muscle in muscle physiology. Okay, the contractile element we say. This is these are the muscle fibers which are they run from tendon to tendon, and when they shorten the muscle, we say that it's it has contracted. And when they stretch, we say that muscle has stretched. Yes, this is what you just you you know up till now. So these are those fibers. 
these are those fibers which are running through and through and minding their own business they are related to uh, muscle contraction the contractile element of the muscle okay we call them the extra fusal fibers extra fusal fibers please tell me if this is clear <clears throat> I need a response on the chat, please. Okay. Everybody's clear on extra fusal fibers. Cool. Okay. Fine. Now, let's look for intra fusal fibers. These are the intra fusal fibers. Okay. To be precise, this guy, these guys here, these guys, these guys. Okay, so you can see now that he has dissected this, I think is from Netter, one of my favorite anatomy books. It used to be on my bedside when I was uh, in first, second year, loved the book. I think it's from Netter, maybe not, I'm not sure. But you can see that he has dissected out, these are the cut edges can see evident here the cut edges of the muscle spindle okay and this is where all the wires are coming the nerves are coming so i'm just telling you the gross features here i'm just moving my cursor on the cut edges of the spindle like structure exposing the intrafusal fibers yeah so these spindle like things these spindle like uh, what is a spindle Spindle is something like this, isn't it? Yes, this is all uh, rough, roughly uh, what a spindle looks like. Okay, there are several spindles in large muscles. Okay, near the tendinous origins of the muscle, several of these guys are present near the tendinous uh, insertions. Not in the tendon near the tendinous insertions okay that's one observation that their their structure look at the look at the way they are formed they are a spindle okay so that's one secondly and one of you needs to make a note of this i may forget to tell you what golgi tendon golgi tendon's uh, arrangement is and one of you needs to remind me then when we discuss golgi, golgi tendon one of the features of muscle spindle is that it is arranged in parallel to the extra fusal fibers. So this muscle spindle carrying the intrafusal fibers of various kinds, which we'll discuss in a bit, it is in parallel in series, in par I, I beg your pardon, in parallel arranged an arrangement with the extra fusal fibers. Okay. So you can, you can see that these are running from, say, this pole to this pole. And so is this. This is just sort of embedded within the, within its extra fusal brothers. Yes. Do you understand the shape? Do you understand the content of the muscle spindle? That muscle spindle has intrafusal fibers in it. Do you understand that these are placed in parallel with the extra fusal fibers? Okay, so we're making ground now. Good. So I'm going to remove these markings now so that we can go a bit further. Okay. We're removing these markings. Now, now let's just focus on the intrafusal fibers contained within the muscle spindle. Yes? Okay. As you can see, 
He has labeled it here, interfusal, which already was discussed. If you can appreciate, and it's not may not be very evident from here, uh, is the shape of these fibers. If you can appreciate my 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 red marker, my red highlighter, I'm gonna slide it through a type of. So there are two types of interfusal fibers. Okay, one is nuclear chain fibers. They are chain-like fibers, and the other ones are nuclear bag bag fibers, B A G bag. Okay. I'm going to run through my this cursor through the nuclear chain fibers. All right. So this is here we go. These are the nuclear chain fibers. They're pretty much straight. Okay. Through and through. And you can see the yellowish markings of um, the nuclei. They are evenly distributed throughout the length of the muscle. Yes. Did you appreciate the nuclear chain fibers? Okay. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Now, let me run through the nuclear bag fibers. Okay. These are the nuclear bag fibers. As you can see, or you may not see because of the markings of the nerve which overlaps the back portion, these, these fibers are swollen in their center. So they are string-like, just like the chain fibers. However, in the middle, they are swollen. This is not the best of pictures to give you the, the, the two types of the fibers, but still, since we are here, we might as well discuss it. And uh, no, these not 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 striated. Those are actin myosin filaments. Remember, this is a good point, Ibrahim. Very good point. Remember, these guys, the the intrafusal fibers, they are hold on, they are not responsible for the contraction of the whole muscle. They do contract a bit. Please note this. They do contract a bit at their ends. At their far ends not at the center though at the far ends where you will find striations however their job is not muscle contraction their job is picking up sensory information of the length of the muscle the job of uh, uh, muscle contraction is of the extrafusal element extrafusal fibers where you see even in this picture you can see the the, the discs and all those bands of the actin myosin filaments Right here, however, you see uh, a, a different configuration. You see nuclei. Ibrahim, do you see the difference? Look at the outside extrafusal fiber, look closely, and then compare it with the intrafusal fiber. You can see that there are dots at regular intervals in the intrafusal fiber. And in the bag variety, you will find the dots are concentrated in the bag portion, i.e. the swollen center portion of the fiber. Okay. However, in the chain, you will see it uh, present throughout the fiber. This is, uh, even under microscope, is clearly different from the extra fusel fiber under which you see all those bands and lines which you've discussed in first year. Yes? Do we now appreciate that there are, that there are intrafusal fibers inside the muscle spindle? And not just that, there are two types of intrafusal fibers, nuclear chain and nuclear back fibers. Are we okay with this? Because we, we will pile in now and we're gonna go ahead and look at the innervation, the sensory and motor peculiar, peculiar innervation of muscle spindle. So with your permission, if you are okay with this till now and there are no questions, Okay, good class, well done. Let's move in. Now, now I'm gonna discuss this part of this diagram, Rupesh. This part, because this part is mentions all the all sorts of the of nerves 
that are coming in or going out. Yes? What did I say going out? Abhi, Jaldi, anybody? What did I say going out? Sensory. Good, good. So people are engaged. Well done. Sensory fibers will be originating from the muscle spindle, the intrafusal fibers, and going out of the nerve trunk. Yes? While motor fibers will be coming in from the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Yes? These two lines, we understand these two lines. Sensory fibers originate from the, from the receptor. The receptor in this case is the muscle spindle itself, the various interfusal fibers uh, that it has. And motor component means the output of the motor, anterior motor neuron on, in the spinal cord, which sends out the motor exon and it enters the muscle spindle. I will tell you, Abdullah Javed, just hold on. Hold on. This, this, this explanation, Abdullah, this explanation comes with the innervation bit. So hold on. Now, if we are set, let's dive in. Now, you know that it's the extra fusal fibers which are responsible for the contraction of the whole muscle. And I am using the word whole repeatedly. Okay, this has, a, this has an implication which will be evident in a bit. So the whole muscle contraction is responsibility of extra fusal fibers. And look at, look at this. This is an alpha motor neuron. I'm explaining the alpha motor neuron now. Yes. These are the endings of the alpha motor neuron. This alpha motor neuron originated in the spinal cord as usual spinal cord okay anterior horn it originated from there and it is innervating the extra fusal element of the muscle okay so when you contract alpha motor neuron you basically contract the whole muscle yes Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So I, I need feedback, guys. Okay. Good. Now, this is what has to do with the extra fusal fibers. We 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 know this. You have done this already. However, now let's start with the sensory innervation first of the muscle spindle, and then we move on to the motor innervation of the muscle spindle. Okay. We have the last 10 minutes of the first 40 minutes, so we might have to reconnect. Stay with the program, please. So let's let's find out what this this where this is going. Okay, this primary annulospiral endings of afferent fibers. Now, if you look closely, if you look closely. This is where he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. Look at the pale sort of greenish or creamish fibers coming. I'm just following them now for you. Look at this. They are coming from the belly of the nuclear back fibers and also the centermost part of the nuclear chain fibers. From here, they originate and they go up the ladder and out of the muscle spindle and the muscle. Yes. Do you do you see the pale greenish, whatever the color is, originating from the belly of the center portion of the two types of interfusal fibers and coalescing and going up? Yes. Now. This is where you need to turn on that imaginative hat of yours. Because if I were in front of you, I would have demonstrated this to you. What is the word annular spiral means? Annular spiral means 
well that it spirals around its origin it just doesn't uh, uh, it this is not the kind of arrangement that it has this is like a slap on stick on kind of arrangement no and in a spiral is it spirals around the fiber and and originates from there yes so it 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 winds around the the bag the bag or, or the chain it it winds around it for a good portion of the center point and and then goes up yes it 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 uh, uh, what's the word i'm looking for a word here it surrounds no that's not the good word it it wraps wraps is the is, is a better word it wraps around the center porch when you look at your anatomy books for this you will you will know what i'm trying to say uh, in explanation for angular spot so in circles well done thank you so much it encircles the center most point and that's that's how it 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 manages to form the coils around well done yes it coils around fine okay is there any problem with the primary of uh, and primary endings uh, is also called 1a let me write this it's very important 1a one is uh, said in roman a is said in small 1a 1a is primary if you remember you read the classification of nerve fibers in first year and if you really remember in that classification there was a sensory classification sensory fibers are denoted using this type of nomenclature 1a 2 etc etc roman in roman okay yes hello are we clear okay good so we know one type of sensory innovation now okay yes okay now i'm going to let me keep this here okay let me change the color let's pick uh, some bright color let's pick the pink color okay now let's look at the second type of sensory innovation it's called secondary flower spray endings of afferent fibers as you can see these uh, innovations are pretty descriptive uh, and for good reason so you see that this is what he's talking about Can you see the pink? Yeah. This is the flower end, and it, it it can it just looks like a flower as well. Okay. So secondary flower endings are also there, but the difference is what's the difference? Tell me so that I know you can see this picture well. What's the difference? the difference is in the location so 1a is in the center yes and this shabash shab sahab this is peripherally located okay peripherally located this is called also i mean this is classified as 2 these types of uh, uh, So the secondary endings are labeled as type 2 sensory fibers yes no no they are they are present all around different way of attachment yes and the location location is important now uh since we are in the last 3 minutes let me just wind up Uh, this uh, and then we, when we reconnect, we can move forwards. Okay. Now we have done the sensory innervation of muscle spindle. This is quite some work. Okay. Please do revise it in due course so that you don't forget. And trust me, 
it gets it's very forgetful forgettable sorry okay ideally is to draw it uh, the following diagram will make your life much easier this is just to give you the almost real time situation of these fibers the schematic diagram the one to draw i'll show you in the next slide which are okay now we look at the motor this is the motor gamma motor neurons as opposed to the alpha the alpha we've done alpha is related with the uh, extra fusion fibers now we we'll look for what does this gamma motor neuron do okay and if you look closely you can see that you don't you don't you shouldn't worry about following it from here you can always follow it from here so these buttons these tabs these are the gamma motor do you see the tabs the buttons button like things yes these button like things okay let me let me try with it how about now wow i didn't think it was this zoom but sorry <laughs> Yes, these button-like things. Can you see it? Good, good. Just, just trace them. But remember now that these are motor fibers, so they are coming in, right? So this is now I'm I'm showing you from the so-called spinal cord end. So this comes in. It seems to branch into two here. Yes. if you can see the cursor that will be most wonderful so one branch goes here divides into further two button one button two and the other one goes on and makes these two connections here yeah beta ji these are the gamma motor innervation of muscle skull okay okay if you have understood this let me know look i put them in pink boxes yes cool now i'll just go back to the last question and wind the slide up all right now just a little more detail to the muscle spindle and the interfusive fibers these fibers do have some contraction of okay so i was answering the question of the contractile ability of the muscle spindle i was saying that look this is basically a sensory receptor so it is a sensory receptor so it's not supposed to contract the whole muscle however it it is given it is given some contractile elements i.e. acromyosin filaments at the at the ends at the taper, tapering ends of the of the interfusal fibers okay so not at the center but at the tapering ends as somebody uh, noted okay this is where they can contract however the center cannot contract and this is where i will take my time to explain this and make my life easy in the future i will zoom in again are you guys listening okay so yeah some crucial information coming up now okay now is clear clear okay now check this out i told you that this portion here sort of this portion and what is not shown here this this portion this has the contractile element okay while the center portion 
this sort of center portion. Okay, sorry, it should include the annular swelling as well. So the center portion, basically, which portion? The portion which uh, has the sensory traffic going through. Okay, this is not contractile. Okay, it's only the above portion. There might be some uh, mismatch between what I'm saying and the labeling, but this is an anatomical diagram, and we are talking about the function here. Okay, so. Uh, I will not restrict myself strictly to anatomical details. Okay, so just imagine that the centermost portion of the spindle is non-contractile, non-contractile, while the rest of the polar ends they have some contraction contraction ability, not near anywhere near what extra fusel fibers can achieve. They are packed with actin and myosin. Uh, filaments and they are supposed to contract and that's that. However, these have little actin myosin filaments and their contraction is to a limited extent. Is this clear? I will now tell you the driving concept, the main concept. Need feedback guys, is this clear? Okay. 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 Fine. Now, now I'll explain what's going on. So, for example, you contract this area and this area. Do you see the yellow arrows? So you you you, con you contract this area and, and along the yellow arrows, okay? By and this is where I will sneakily add some additional information by contracting the gamma motor neuron. See what I did there? I added some information. No, Betty, they're not. They're not. Good question. Okay. So, now you know that when the gamma motor neuron contra uh, uh, functions or, or is active, what, what, what happens? What happens is the stuff that it's innervating, the stuff that is innervating the parts of the, of the thing, of the spin of the interfusal fibers that it's innovating, they contract because at the end of the day, it is motor. Yes. Sorry, I have to switch back and forth because there are kids coming in. Do you understand? So when gamma motor uh, uh, neuron fires up, okay, from the spinal cord, the area that it it innovates, it contracts. And this is along the yellow lines that I've talked about. Better, uh, easily, that's what I'm saying. Uh, don't stick to the anatomical detail. Now, he has written contractile element here, and this is where he has made the uh, gamma motor neuron. Okay, so it is in the contractile element. And he has strictly said that non contractile element is literally the central portion uh, of the of the of, of the spindle. Okay, so even by this diagram, you can see that the button is lying in the in intrafusal fibers. By this arrow, he does not mean this spot only; it means the whole thing. Okay, this whole thing. Yes, up sir. Focus. Good. Focus is good. So when you contract this element here. Tell me what should happen to the central portion of the muscle spindle. If I were to contract the these polar ends of this spindle structure, what should happen to the non-contractile center of the spindle? 
question. Bulge. It won't bulge. It would stretch. Well done. Well done, guys. This is a pretty neat uh, understanding of what this thing is. And you will understand this in the coming week that we have covered some serious uh, situation here, serious concepts. So when the spindle contracts under the gamma motor neuron or on the on the edges or, or the or the polar areas the center most portion is stretched remember this please it is stretched okay so is this clear what would happen when the center most portion is stretched hint 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 at the cursor what it's doing it's going nuts but it's going nuts in a specific direction what is this direction sensory signal well done sensory signal so the sensory signal made in blue to the spinal cord starts to increase yeah let's not talk about the extra fuel fibers for a bit okay we will bring them in when the rest of you are ready okay fine so we now know we have understood hopefully most of us that when gamma motor neuron contracts the muscle spindle its designated areas the centermost part becomes stretchy when it becomes stretchy, the annular spiral endings get triggered, so do the flower endings, okay, and they increase the sensory output of the muscle spindle, this, this whole sensory structure, and the spinal cord dorsal horn starts receiving additional information, more information than usual. Remember, this is a live structure, and the muscle is always in a state of some stretch, right, because it is alive. So, the the constant uh, do you remember phasic and tonic receptors guys from first years yes what is the phasic response phasic response is what happens all the time okay so baroreceptor reflex in the baroreceptor reflex the baroreceptors are in a constant state of stretch yes but when the blood pressure decreases or increases the stretch differs Okay, so that is the tonic response when it changes suddenly. However, when it happens in the background all the time, that's the phasic response, right? Okay, so the quote unquote phasic response is when the muscle spindle is at rest, it appraises the spinal cord of the degree of stretch of the muscle, whatever it may be, right? And so this is one thing. The second thing, when it is actually stretched, the center portion is stretched more than usual by this gamma motor uh, mischief contraction, this sensory input increases. So if you are sitting in the spinal cord nerve center, you will start receiving more sensory input from the <clears throat> primary and the secondary uh, nerve fibers and you will be able to say with confidence that the muscle seems to be stretching or the muscle spindle has become more sensitive to stretch these mark these words the second set of words that either it's stretching or it has become more sensitive to stretch because the sensory input has increased okay no i've i've seen your question just hold it, please. I'll, I'll answer it now. What I've just said has it registered. If you are in the spinal cord, 
increased sensory stimulation coming from the primary and the secondary endings will tell you the muscle either has stretched or the central portions have become a bit more sensitive to stretch picking up degrees of stretch that they weren't picking up before this might be a little confusing the right at the end bit might be a bit confusing is it not if it's not that's wonderful we will talk about that bit amit we'll talk about that we will dissect these two in the next slide if time permits but i think we are we we, we are having a good thing here so I, i don't want to break this chain most of this stuff was actually from the next slide but mashala you are responding so i don't want to break your visual cue did you understand the last sentence i said though if you are sitting in the spinal cord that sentence Oh. Absa, no. Yes, I, 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 I feel it. Yes, and I'm surprised that most of you did. Yes, Hira, good. Repeat. We need to repeat this. I will do it. Okay. Now, let me repeat it from a different angle. Don't worry, you will get it. Inshallah. I'm going to rub this off. Now. why do we have these nerves coming out of the muscle spindle because we are interested in the length of the muscle okay how will these nerves which are innervating the intrafusal fibers inside the muscle spindle surrounded by the extrafusal element help us in calculating or or imagining or sensing the overall length of the muscle is the question isn't it so you have the whole bulk of extra fusal fibers abdullah they yes and no bit yes and no and to answer quickly the question that was raised hold on uh question question gamma motor neurons is responsible for stimulate protein beta ye dono questions related hain so gamma motor neurons get stimulated together with alpha motor in some in some situations and in some situations they don't okay i won't speak about this any any more because this is something which i will introduce in the next lecture okay coming back so please acha ab don't interrupt me with gamma motor for now all right let, let me just finish this off so the sensory fibers they are supposed to give information to the spinal cord about the length of the whole muscle yes how can they can they do that they are not part of the extra fusal element yes so when you stretch a muscle or contract a muscle what type of muscle element gets stretched or contracts it's the extra fusal element right yes okay but what you have done is intelligently what you've done is you haven't put muscle spindle inside these these muscles what you've done is you have arranged for an a muscle spindle containing a separate type of muscle fibers for the intrafusal fibers and you have put them embedded them within the extrafusal fibers in a parallel arrangement so listen to this carefully now when the whole muscle when the whole muscle stretches stretches what happens is is these extra fusal fibers will stretch yes yes and since but this is very crucial now and since these extra fusal fibers are connected sort of by the endomyceum and whatever those membranes are okay they are connected in parallel with the muscle spindle the muscle spindle will also say it stretch 
Yes? Yes. If you have understood, this is exciting now. Well done. If we if we if I have, we have demonstrated this online, this is this is wicked, I'm telling you. Very good. I'm 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 very excited. I'm not sure about you guys. I'm very happy because I've taught this in live classes and we have struggled in the first go, even in a live class. So if we have gotten through in an online class with this, I mean, this is good stuff. So again, recapping, once again, whole muscle stretch, stretches the extrafusal fibers and the interfusal fibers. Yes. And when the interfusal fibers get stretched, what happens? Well, what happens is, let me find a color for this now, so that we can read. Is the center, sorry, 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 sorry. Is the centermost part get stretched? Can you see the dark green box? It says, yes, the centermost sensory signals increase. Bilkul. Bilkul. Okay? So the whole muscle stretch will also the whole muscle stretch will also increase the sensory output of muscle spindle towards the spinal cord. Voila. Good. Now, just seamlessly join what I explained to you of the gamma motor neuron activation and what happens there with the whole muscle stretch. And we have a symphony. Everybody's gone quiet, eh? Don't you notice that the sensory output increases in both scenarios? But we are different technology. Solid. If I were to say that during whole muscle stretch and gamma motor activation, they both increase sensory output by the muscle spindle. Is this not what you've understood up till now? Yes. Cool. cool. This is good. This is good. I'm happy. Okay. We've done this. Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, we have, oh, we've gone over the time. Uh, can I just sneak one last minute from your time, please? One last minute. Thank you. You're a good kids. Okay. So, let me just leave you with a little. of information this so when you see this diagram your life becomes a flower ending in itself <laughs> so up close and personal with the muscle spindle here you see all sorts of information nicely slotted in you can see that this is the uh, nuclear this is the bag fiber it's called the nuclear bag fiber as well this is the chain fiber, also called the nuclear chain fiber. Both are interfusal fibers, as labeled here. This is the bag type fiber. This is the chain type fiber. Yes, and you can see the the group A nerve endings. Group one A primary afferent. Look at the coiling and the and the encircling very clearly. Then you have the group two, which is really the not so much, but at the end, the, at the end of the of the fiber as well. Okay, and here you now see some differences. I hope you can appreciate. Maybe it's too much information from the last slide, but still, let me just say it, and we will repeat it, inshallah, in the next class. That group one A supplies both type of fibers. Group 2 supplies the chain only. 
This has some serious implications in the functions of the muscle spindle, which we will cover in the next class. But for now, just remember that 1A supplies both, as you can see here, and group 2 supplies only the chain pipes. Kapish? Yes, yes, no, I don't know. Kapish, okay. And let's talk about the gamma efferents. You won't like it, I'm sorry, but there are two types of gamma efferents. So what will be SC2 after knowing that it has become more sensitive? That's a very good question, Bisma. Uh, let me try to give you a gold mole answer here. Uh, when the muscle is stretched, uh, generally we tend to bring it back to its default length. Okay, so when it is stretched, we would like for it to contract. What is it called? It's called the stretch reflex. Yes, this one. What is it called? When you suddenly stretch a muscle, what does it do? It tends to oppose that stretch by contracting. That's called the stretch reflex. So now today you have, sorry, stretch reflex, stretch reflex. But yeah, this is not the main point. She just asked a question, that's why I mentioned it. I will describe it in detail, inshallah, in the coming lectures, all of don't worry about it. I'm just saying that she asked me when the muscle is stretched and the information goes to the spinal cord, what after knowing the spindle has become more sensitive, what will the spinal cord do? What the spinal cord will do, it, it will activate the motor neurons and contract it. The brief answer, let's keep it brief here, okay? Going back to gamma efferents. So gamma efferents now also are of two types. To keep, keep it simple, I did not uh, mention this in the previous slide, it was very cluttered. So I'm making it in green. So gamma efferents are of two types, okay? Let me just work this off so we have a clear picture of the gamma efferents. So this is gamma. Okay. You have a dynamic type of gamma efferent, which is only present in the nuclear bag fiber. Okay. And then you have a static gamma efferent, which goes to both. Is this clear? These are anatomical details with some serious physiological and clinical implications, which we hope to discuss in the coming lectures. So gamma efferents are also of two types, dynamic and static. Dynamic supplies both bag and chain and static supplies, I beg your pardon, dynamic supplies only bag, static supplies both bag and chain. Chal. With this, we finish this uh, super complicated lecture. Well done, class.